Hello, welcome to Belmont Journal. I am your host for today, Kimberly Haley Jackson. Today we will be speaking with Fran Yuhan, the outgoing board director of the LGBTQ Alliance and incoming director, Leslie Talmadge. Thank you. Thank you. So I was wondering today, if you could let your audience know, um, Fran, um, can you tell us about the founding of the Alliance, which was then the Gay Straight Alliance in 2001? Can you tell us how that came about? So it started in 2001, but my son, who was in high school at the time, Jared, um, came out to us um, probably about a year before that. And, um, you know, we tried to help him. Well, first it was just a learning because we hadn't really thought much about, I mean, my other son, who's his, you know, um, twin, uh, sort of told us that he thought, well, he was surprised that we didn't already know just by knowing my son, Jared. So um, it was sort of surprising because I think we always had the attitude in the family that we just assumed anybody could be um, of any uh, sexual orientation. Um, and I don't think we ever made assumptions about that. But so I guess I was surprised that I didn't know earlier. Um, but he came out in high school at the time. There was a gay straight alliance at the high school, but I don't think there were very many kids out, and there certainly were no um, teachers that were out um, at the time. And there was so, even though there was a gay straight, straight alliance, we actually took Jared to a lot of other towns that had more active. Uh, scenes in terms of the uh, LGBT community. Um, so we really tried to find ways for him to meet other people and people who were comfortable being out because at the high school there weren't kids that were out at the time. Um, so that's how it began. I was also an active member of Belmont Against Racism. And so our first meeting was all the people I knew from there and neighbors and we had about 33 people in my living room for the first meeting to kind of kick off the idea of having uh, something like the Alliance uh, because I felt like there was really no place that we were talking openly about it. Uh, coincidentally, I was part of the first church in Belmont and we were going through the process of becoming a welcoming congregation, which really means educating ourselves as to what um, LGBTQ means and what the community needs and how we could be more welcoming. So, we were going through a process as well. Um, so there was a lot of support from an already, for, already formed uh, groups. So that was really an asset to really getting it off the ground very quickly. Um, so Donna Ruvalo, Gladys Unger, who are uh, still, Gladys is very involved still uh, on the board, were from that era. <laughs> and um, so we held meetings, we started doing things at the high school. We had the gay men's course come and perform there. I think it was the first high school they'd ever done um, performance at. Uh, we brought some plays um, to the school uh, in 2000. So that was in 2001, we started the organization. 2004, gay marriage was enacted in Massachusetts. And for 10 years, we had a um, ice cream social on the town green. So we became very visible. And I think that was really important to have events that people would come to. And we continued doing that. And Leslie, you know, who's take, Leslie's taking over as the, the, the chair of the group. Um, so I've been involved in the group for since 2001. And the last two years has really been the process of getting more people interested and becoming more actively involved. Because I think, you know, we, we gathered people for various things, but in a more informal way, I think over the last 20 years, and now we've established uh, a board, of, well, um, a leadership group of about nine people. So I think that's where we are now. I'm really pleased as to how active everybody's been and how much they have to contribute. So um, the best thing a person who can do who starts an organization, uh, the best feeling is to go out with the sense that we've got really confident, excited, uh, enthusiastic, and you know, leaders. So I feel really good about that. Um, very easy to kind of hand it over. But I think the challenge will be, because not everybody will stay for 20 years. So the challenge will be to continue to get more people who are active and to always have the leadership that we need 
to continue this organization and to look for new, some of the things we've done more recently, we've done some of the observances like the um, Transgender Day of Remembrance, Transgender Day of Visibility. We've worked with, with the police department to develop a um, transgender policy about how, you know, educating them about they have transgender individuals that they're interfacing with, you know, what are their needs? Um, and um, we've started this Belmont Welcomes program uh, where we really are trying to get businesses involved and be more visible in their support of the LGBTQ community, um, really looking at their own employment pro um, practices. And uh, so really just trying to reach out more to all the sectors of the community. Um, working with the Beach Street Center, doing some programming there. Um, so that, you know, that's basically where we are now. I think we're in a really good place. We're very, I think, very well regarded by the leadership in the town, and we've made a lot of connections that weren't there even like 10 years ago. Hmm. Um, Fran, thank you for your, your service, um, not only with the LGBTQ Alliance, but also on various commissions um, within Belmont. Um, and your leadership, I know you're stepping down. <laughs> will be sorely missed and you know i'm sure that that many folks still involved um will be outreaching to you um albeit less frequently <laughs> than than some of us do now but with that i i kind of want to turn the the conversation to leslie for a little bit and leslie if you could let us know um what garnered your interest in joining the alliance sure so um i knew that fran was almost a one woman organization doing this with the help of Gladys Unger and maybe one or two others. I mean, certainly more people along the way, but, um, and I had a freshman who came out as transgender freshman year of high school and just thought what a great organization we have in town. And I imagine Fran and Gladys who have been doing this for 20 years might want some new blood and some support. And so I think we had a meeting and brought on some newer folks. I can't say too much younger, but um, I did just have a meeting with someone who is very excited to join our board, I'm hoping. And um, at any rate, certainly we would like to attract a younger or younger, more diverse membership over time. But um, I just felt like Fran was doing such great work. And how could you not want to get on board with making our town more welcoming for all individuals in town? Um, so I'm just so grateful to Fran for paving the way. That's wonderful. I, I love the, the activism spurred on by your experiences with your family. Could you give some advice to our audience about the best way to kind of handle these situations with your children coming out, even like just as friends or family in the community, what was most helpful in providing support to your children from the community? Well, I think, I think probably seeing even to this day, Jared, like sees that everything I post on Facebook related to this um, group. And I think just knowing that your parents are active, right? And trying to educate others um, and trying to connect you to other resources that you need in your life. You know, so I think that was something certainly 23 years ago was really important because there was so little. I didn't know anybody who was LGBTQ at the time. Actually. I mean, I didn't know that I knew them. Um, until I started the group. So um, yeah, so I think visibility and, and you know, doing things as parents, doing things, I mean, not everybody chooses to do that. I've heard from other parents who, you know, mentioned that their child is LGBTQ and they don't necessarily want to join this group or they, it's sort of like a, everybody deals with it differently. So I think finding a comfortable way for you to deal with it, but, you know, letting your children know that you're supportive and you want to know what it is they need, I guess. Because, you know, high school, middle school is a very fraught time when there's a lot of uncertainty. I mean, if your kid happens to be confident, 
uh, that's great, but not every kid is experiencing that. So there can be a lot of pain. And like one of the things that happened to my son was he had a best friend. And when he found out that he, Jared was gay, he stopped being friends with him. So you have to encounter these kinds of things that, you know, I'm sure that can happen now, maybe less so now, but, um, you know, trying to figure out how to navigate those kinds of painful experiences, you know? Um, so. And, and I would just say, Fran, and you've been very fortunate to have, I think, joined some parent support groups at various points and, so that can be really helpful to get support for yourself. Um, mm -hmm. But first and foremost, love and support the child that you have and let them know, you know, gender identity, sexual orientation, um, gender expression, all of this can be very much of a journey. And to let your child know that you support them wherever they are on their journey and that they will not have to face this journey alone and that you are here to help them figure out what they need to the extent that they want help. But the main thing is just, um, you know, this is a very complicated time to be a, a teenager or a child trying to, because there's so many options. So trying to figure out what is my identity and, and frankly, having general discussions about gender identity, you know, which um, you might not think to do otherwise, but, you know, what do you think of your gender and how much, you know, if gender is a spectrum, you know, where do you consider that you fall on the spectrum? And when did you first become aware of your gender identity or what are issues that you've struggled with in terms of your gender identity and opening those conversations up so that you're not just focusing on your child's sexual identity or orientation or gender identity, but having these conversations more globally, I think is a really great idea. And so with that, you know, I know initially there was a focus on, you know, the legalization of marriage equality. We had that happen. Um, people are kind of more open now, I think, about talking about, you know, where they fall, um, you know, on the gender spectrum or what their sexual preferences are. So I guess with, with some of these changes, and then I'm going to throw a little bit of a monkey wrench in there. Um, so we're seeing a lot of progression, um, but with like the recent um, decision by the Supreme Court, we're also seeing a little bit of a turn back. Um, and so, you know, with that, I, I know that the Alliance put out a statement about that. So Leslie, with you taking on uh, the leadership role, if you could educate our audience a little bit about that statement and, and why you put it out and, and why it's so important that we remain vigilant about these things. That's a great question. Thank you. So I think, first of all, just to identify what a confusing time this is. I was just reading that on the one hand, there is great popular support um, for um, LGBTQ individuals on a personal level. And yet, um, my goodness, we've just seen some really discouraging news in terms of gay rights, in terms of trans rights, in terms of affirmative action, abortion access. And so actually, I'll be more specific, GLAD says that support for LGBTQ equal rights is at an all time high. And yet by the same token, the Supreme Court has made some um, very discouraging um, rulings recently. And so our work right now is crucial. Um, specifically, um, the, the ruling that you're talking about, I, I'm thinking, um, well, there's, there's a lot both nationally and then also within Massachusetts um, itself, but to go national first. So the Supreme Court recently struck down affirmative action in college admissions. They also ruled in favor of the Colorado Web Designers First Amendment right to refuse to provide services for gay couples. That's setting a really scary precedent. Um, and I think 
a number of us just feel like, what's happening? This is um, just such devastating news. Um, we also have a number of, um, I think over 500 anti-LGBTQ bills that have been proposed. Um, so that's really discouraging. Um, at the same time in our Commonwealth, Governor Healy just submitted some new guidelines for the comprehensive health and PE curriculum framework to the Board of Elementary and Secondary Education this month, which is an L um, proposing an LGBTQ inclusive, medically accurate, and developmentally and age appropriate framework outlines. Sorry, essentially the guidelines for sex ed have not been outdated, have not been updated in I think it's nine, no, almost a quarter of a century. So they were last updated, the standards in 1999. So the fact is we're hoping those standards will get passed. Um, certainly the LGBTQ portion is just a very small portion of this piece, but nonetheless, that's hopeful. We're really hoping that some of our audience members might write in and submit comments in support of that. But so this is a complicated time. We have reason for hope and we have reason for real fear. Certainly there's been a lot of violence directed at individuals, um, drag performers, but also um, institutions, educational institutions, Boston Children's Hospital um, was receiving death threats over the gender affirming care that they provide for trans individuals. So my goodness, um, the work that we're doing is all the more crucial right now. And I think even in our town, we do have, you know, we, we're still dealing with some, maybe the much smaller kinds of conflicts. Or pushback, because like, you know, uh, people not liking the display of signage, for example, LGBTQ flags, stickers in public places, that's been, something we've had complaints about. And so there are people who are in our town who are not on board with everything we're doing. And I think also, I think maybe the statement, are you talking about the statement where uh, we're really open to talking to any group, uh, any, you know, sometimes we might have a complaint about a particular business or an organization that may represent something that uh, is at odds maybe not LGBT wise, but maybe politically or whatever. And I think a re recent statement was made by the Alliance about our openness to talking to different groups and really trying to, maybe Leslie, you could talk about that more since your group uh, put that statement together. Sure, so um, in essence, we're really proud of the fact that we have partnerships with a number of businesses and, and people in town. And we really wanna encourage dialogue with people um, with maybe some different perspectives. And frankly, you know, if we receive a donation to the Alliance, for example, we consider ourselves very lucky to be receiving a donation because conceivably someone is not gonna to donate to us if they don't believe in our um, in our goals of making this a more inclusive town. So, but our hope is to um, have partnerships with a variety of different organizations and community groups, 